Today I'm going to talk to you about how to properly splice a wire. Specifically, I'm talking about automotive wiring, although these techniques will apply to any stranded wire. Uh, they do not apply to household wiring, which is completely different. Now, many times people will just simply strip the wire, twist it together, and tape it up and call it good. And this works fine for a roadside repair, but if you don't fix it properly once you reach home, I guarantee you it will come back to haunt you, probably at 3 o'clock in the morning on some country road. The items you need to do this are obviously the wire to be spliced, a pair of wire cutters, a decent pair of wire strippers, a damp sponge or rag, safety glasses, now, you may think the safety glasses are overkill and working on a workbench like this, they may be, but if you're working under your vehicle or even more so under the dash, there's a very real possibility of solder dripping and splattering and you don't want to get it in your eye. Also, another obvious thing is solder. Heat shrink tubing, quality heat shrink tubing as you would find at a home improvement store or auto supply or electrical supply. I don't recommend the heat shrink that they sell at Radio Shack or some other places because it's not as durable. It tends to split or scorch if you apply too much heat. A soldering iron and a heat gun. Now you can get away with using your wife's hair dryer but don't tell her I said that if she catches you in the garage with her $80 hair dryer. Now, you may notice I have a bundle of three wires here. And I'm going to show you that in order to show you a little tip. If you have a bundle of wires, you want to snip them in a staggered pattern instead of snipping them all just in one spot. There's two reasons for this. One is when you go to wrap this wire, if you're all cut and soldered in exactly the same spot, you're going to make a bulge in the wire bundle. That bulge will look ugly if anybody sees it, but even if it's up under the dash or somewhere, it will be more likely to rub through the insulation if it's bulged out. The other reason is that if you have, uh, say you're installing a radio or a some other component, your wire colors may not match. And if you're cut in a staggered pattern, you will have less chance of crossing the wires and having to redo this. Now, I'm going to strip these wires, as you can see, about 5 eighths of an inch from either end. It will give you plenty for a good solder joint without being overkill. If the wires, if you're working with old wire, you may find that once you strip it, it's tarnished, corroded. If it's like that, you want to clean it using contact cleaner, maybe even some Scotch-Brite. You want the wire to be nice and shiny or you're not going to get a good solder joint. Now, as you can see, the wires are stripped. I've stripped them about 5 eighths of an inch on either side and cut the heat shrink to about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, so that it will overlap the insulation on either end of the solder joint. Slide the heat shrink on first. If you forget this step, you'll be mad at yourself because you'll have to take the solder joint back apart. After the heat shrink is on, take the stripped end of the wire and splay the strands out. Splay them out in all directions. Then take the wires and overlap them inside each other and twist it together. Twist it nice and tight, as tight and smooth as you can get it. The tighter and smoother it is, the better the finished product is going to look. Also, try to get it straight because once you put solder on it, if it's bent, it's going to stay bent. After you have the wires twisted together, heat your soldering iron up, 
and then wipe the tip with your damp rag or sponge to get the impurities off. Apply a little solder to the end of the soldering iron and put it under the wire. The blob of solder on the tip will help transfer the heat to the wire faster. So once the wire is hot enough, you'll be able to melt the solder on the wire, not on the tip of the soldering gun. You notice that I can melt it way at the end and it will flow to the heat. Do that until the entire joint is covered in solder but not to the point that it's all smooth. You want to still be able to see the strands on the surface. Let it sit for a moment and cool. You'll be able to see it go from shiny to dull. When that happens, you know it's solid. If you move it before that, before it's reached the solid state, it will quite possibly come apart and uh, have a bad connection. After it's cooled for a moment or so, slide the heat shrink over the solder joint and center it so that it overlaps the insulation on either end and then apply nice even heat with the heat gun. Not too much, you don't want to get too close or too much heat for too long. You can scorch the heat shrink or split it and then uh, you'll have to do the insulation over again. Nice, even heat from all sides. And there it is. Perfect solder joint that will last for the life of your vehicle, be trouble free, weatherproof, and smooth, not cause you any problems aesthetically or functionally. Now, as you can see, by splicing the wires in a staggered pattern, the splices are not against each other. You decrease the chance of shorts if there's a problem with the heat shrink, if there gets a wear hole in it or something. There's nothing, no other solder joint there for to short against. Also, as I said earlier, when you wrap this bar bundle, if it's something that shows, whether you wrap it with tape or corrugated tubing or whatever, it's going to be nice and smooth. It's not going to have one big bulge in the middle like it would if you had all the solder joints exactly in the same spot. And there you have it, a solder joint that will last for the life of your vehicle and be trouble free. If you have problems, it's going to be somewhere else.